As we conclude what has been a great year 2016 and we're about to go into the season of Christmas and spending time with our loved ones, we also have at the back of our minds the question, I wonder what 2017 holds, I wonder what 2017 will bring. And so I wanted to prepare a short video clip to just encourage you on how to have the best year ever. You see, there are two ways of actually facing the future. You can face the future with excitement, anticipation, passion, with a feeling of purpose, with hope, or you can face the future with anxiety and fear and worry. Um, both are choices. I prefer the first choice, which is to face the future with a positive attitude. But to do that, you have to be ready for the future. Every year, at the start of the year, we tend to do the same thing we do every time. We make resolutions. We say, this is what I will do this year. And some of them are achieved and some are not achieved. This is what I want you to do for a change for 2017 or rather in preparation for 2017 is try something different rather than making your yearly resolutions why don't you start today and what I want to give you in the next few minutes is what I call the six P's to a great year the first P is preparation Preparation really has to do with getting ready. It has to do with planning the future you want to experience. You cannot wait until the first of the, of the year to start experiencing what you want from the year. Every tree starts as a seed. You have to plant the seed first. You have to prepare the ground. You have to care for the ground then you have to wait and the ground always promises or the soil always promises you something and that is that you will get a harvest if you plant good seed and if you patiently wait and if you nurture me as a soil I'll give you a harvest one way is to prepare prepare yourself for 2017 I think the Christmas period is a great time for that preparation period You've taken time off from work, you have a lot of love around you, you have your family, you have your loved ones, you have your friends, you have your family. And so it's a great time to disconnect from all the hustle that comes from the day-to-day -day mundane routine that comes with having a job or being in a school. With the environment that is one of love and warmth, it's a good place and a good time to think ahead. Those who actually successfully achieve their dreams every single year are those who plan. A plan is really you going into the future, holding on to the picture of the future that you've created, bringing that future into the present so that you can do something about it in the present that leads you in the direction of that future. And to be successfully, to successfully achieve your dreams of next year, you need a plan, but you need to prepare as well. I like to use ants as a good example of how to prepare for the future. If you've ever studied ants, they, there's something they do that is quite unique. During the summer, when the sun is out, when it looks all good, when you know the plants and the trees are all looking green the ant never thinks about the summer the ant has enough wisdom to recognize that it's a season and the next season is coming so during the summer the ant starts to prepare for the winter it starts to think about the next season it starts to think about its food shelter but it does something else that is quite interesting. It intentionally decides 
to forget the past. And so the first thing I want to encourage you to do is, in, as we go into 2017, you have to decide to let go of 2016. Let go of whatever you've done that didn't succeed. Let go of whatever you did that succeeded. I say that for two reasons. Sometimes your success can also be an obstacle to you reaching your full potential. The last success you've experienced could, be so, could have been so good that you decide to live in the world of the past and that limits you from becoming the best that you can be, from actually achieving the potential that you were born and that you deserve to have. In the same way, if you've had setbacks and you've had maybe failed encounters, it's important you discipline yourself and you discipline your mind to stay focused. Take your focus away from the past because when you look towards the past, your energy is directed towards where you focus. Your energy follows your focus. And if you're focused towards the past, your energy is staying in your past. You have to let go of your past so you can reach the destiny of your future. The second thing that Ant does is that it forgets the present. So we are going into the Christmas season and the Christmas season, whilst we love it, it's a season for celebration, for love, for sharing, but also it's a season for preparation. The Christmas season often comes so quickly and it goes so quickly. Most people don't actually realize when it's the first of the year, first of January, then it's too late. So do what the ant does. The ant ignores its past. It forgets about what is achieved and what it's done. It forgets the present, which means you have to be willing to delay instant gratification. As you go into the Christmas season, remember that there is another season after Christmas and there is a new year coming after Christmas. So delay your gratification, enjoy the Christmas experience, celebrate Christmas with your loved ones, but prepare for the future. How do you prepare? Very easy. Decide what you want. That's how you start. Decide what you want. I would like to encourage you to perhaps forget about what people normally do, which is the, you know, these are my resolutions. Forget about what you want to do. Focus on the results you want from 2017. Focus on what you want, the results you want, because the results is really what matters. It's not what you do. It's what you obtain, what you become, what you get. It's a numbers game. I like what Winston Churchill says. He says, no matter how beautiful your strategy is, occasionally you should look at the results. It's about what you get. So focus on the results. Identify the results you want from 2017 and write it down. A goal that is not in writing is a wish. You've decided what you want, you have a dream. Dreams have to be converted to goals. And to convert your dreams to goals, you have to crystallize them by giving it permanence on paper, in written form. Now, once you have your goals in writing, you're ready for the next step, which is Prepare a strategy. Pull together a plan for achieving each of the goals. Identify what you have to do, the series of steps that you have to take to achieve the goals. Walk from the end and walk back towards the future. So walk from the end, begin with the end in mind, and just walk backwards, keep walking backwards until you get to today. And you do that simply by saying, what do I have to do every week? What do I have to do every day? What do I have to do every hour to ensure that I achieve each and every goal? Identify and capture it. The next thing you want is you want to document a timeline for achieving each and every goal. A goal needs to have 
a timeline. Your mind cannot operate in fuzzy information. Your mind is so powerful and so sophisticated that it needs specific instructions. It needs to know what you want, it needs to know when you want it, and then it can go to work to give you what you want. So identify for each of your goals when you want to achieve it. You might have a combination of a few goals you want to achieve perhaps in the first quarter of 2017 or farther down in the year, but decide when you want to achieve each goal. Once you've done that, you're ready for the next step, which is identify what you're willing or what you have to give up to achieve the goal. Dreams and goals need discipline, but they also need consistency. They need a sacrifice. Combined together, you have a cocktail. That cocktail is called success. Dreams converted to goals with discipline, consistency, sacrifice is a cocktail we call success. To succeed in 2017, you need a strategy. But you need, more importantly, you need a very clear picture of what you have to give up to achieve your dreams and goals. There's a price to be paid. The promise comes with the price. It's a package deal. With every promise, there is a price. The price has to be paid in full. The price has to be paid in advance. There are no shortcuts. You pay the price, you get the promise. And what's even more interesting is that every day, the price has to be paid. Success is something you lease. Is not something you own. Every day the lease is up for renewal and you renew the lease through sacrifice. So identify the sacrifices you have to make. Identify the obstacles you have to overcome. A lot of times most people give up on their dreams and goals because they haven't planned for the obstacle. So when the obstacle arrives they simply give up. They simply say well, life must be against me. They simply say, I always have bad luck. They say it's fate. They say it's destiny. No, it was because you didn't plan. It was because you didn't have a strategy and you didn't take into account who you had to be at that point in time to be able to jump over the obstacle. If you've ever seen the athletes running on the track, where they have obstacles, they have to jump over each obstacle, something remarkable happens. It's called the hurdles. As each athlete is approaching the obstacle, they have to adjust their speed so that they position themselves in such a way that they can jump safely over without knocking it down and without falling down. Those who successfully get over the obstacles are always the ones who have trained themselves and they know exactly when they need to adjust their speed and where their foot has to be so that they can successfully navigate the obstacle. You have to see yourself like an athlete running on the track. You will have obstacles. Identify where they are. When you get to the obstacle, if you've identified where they are and you've planned for them and you've been developing the skills and developing yourself and trying to build your character and your attitude so that when they arrive, you're ready, what you will find is that every time you encounter an obstacle, you simply smile and say, welcome, I expected you. And you will see, you will see each obstacle like part of the experience of the journey, that you won't get frustrated. Now, once you've identified the obstacles, you're ready for one of the most important steps, which is to take action. Now, because you've identified all of what you need to do for your preparation stage, you can hold on to taking action until the 1st of January. Yes, you can decide to start in December, but enjoy the festive seasons. 
celebrate with the family but keep your eye keep yourself regularly reminded of what you need to do from day one it's not about having an excellent day every year it's not about having one great day on January the 1st and another great day on the 17th of January and another great day on the 21st of March what you want is what we call game excellence which means every single day you discipline yourself to do what needs to be done and that is a process of first of all conditioning your mind it all starts in your mind so the Christmas period the preparation and the action phase should be something you do in your head in your mind and then as soon as the year starts from the 1st of January you start the same activity in person you start marching towards your destination that is preparation but preparation is very important if you study the lives of every great athlete every great successful person everyone who has achieved a level of um, success that we admire or that you admire there's something you recognize is that they started preparing in advance for the life they wanted to live to have something that you do not have you have to become someone that you're not to become someone that you're not it requires discipline it requires time it requires consistency and it requires practice you have to start practicing for what you want to experience next year so number one P is preparation prepare for 2017 prepare for the future the second thing you have to think about is P number two which is position yourself 2017 will come with great opportunities it will come with some challenges and it will come with change we live in a world now where it's called an area of the three C's we have accelerated competition overwhelming complexity and tremendous competition 2017 will bring even more of those for those who are prepared it will be the best of times for those who are not it might be the worst of times position yourself so that you're ready for 2017 and there are a number of ways you can do this the first is you have to position yourself first in your mind it's time now to go into the garden of your mind and remove all those weeds remove all those self-doubts and self-beliefs that haven't served you from 2016 and the past clear out the garden clean out the garden anything in your mind that hasn't served you all the mental junk food that has been pouring into your mind this is the time to detox your mind the Christmas period is a time to actually get your mind really cleaned out because the garden of your mind will produce the quality of the results in your life and you must see yourself as the keeper you must see yourself as the person who stands sentinel at the gate of your mind but also stand at the window of your mind so that what comes in is filtered it's checked and if it doesn't accord with what you want you send it out but also you guard and nurture what's inside the quality of your mind the quality of your thoughts would always decide the quality of your life so position yourself by starting now to condition your mind to identify the types of seeds you want planted in your mind and the seeds have to start going into the soil right now if you're waiting until January it might be too late plant the seed water the soil nurture the soil and wait patiently once it's January 1st you can start doing all the necessary things you need to do to ensure that the harvest is plentiful the second thing 
you have to position yourself for is understand that because your mind is the garden the thoughts that come into your mind will control how you feel how you feel will control what you do what you do if repeated consistently and continuously will form habits so the, the second position you must take is to position yourself through your habits your daily habits decide who you become if I sat with you and I were to observe your habits and what you did every day and I could see your habits based on what you've done in the last 10 years assuming there is no change I can predict your future because your daily habits decide who you become permanently there are success habits that you have to learn there are failure habits that you may have to release and let go of and you do that simply through the law of substitution you displace one habit with another why do you want to start now you want to start now really because to have or to create a new habit that stays with you for a lifetime you have to be willing to discipline yourself to practice that habit for 100 days without fail consistently for 100 days of discipline without fail that is the way you can form a new habit and have it locked in but also that is a way that you can actually rid yourself of an old habit. We have roughly two weeks left before the end of the year. Yes, it's not enough time, but what it does for you is it places you in a position of you having gained momentum. Rather than starting on the 1st of January trying to get momentum. So over the Christmas period you can start formulating and ridding yourself of the old habits that didn't serve you in 2016 and those that didn't serve you in the past and start practicing the daily habits of success that are aligned and connected to the goals and the dreams you want to achieve next year so position yourself through your habits look around your life study yourself and say to yourself what habits do I need to get me to the future that I want but more importantly what habits do I need to get rid of? Success is like an equation. It has a number of component parts. If you mix the right ingredients of success in the right sequence at the right time, you get the same dish, you get a result. The outcome is guaranteed. On the other hand, if you put in a wrong ingredient, that can easily change the outcome. It's not about developing success habits only. It's about removing the habits that are not serving you. You can have all the ingredients of what makes a beautiful dish, but by putting in one wrong ingredient, it changes the taste of the dish. So identify the habits you have to let go of. Now let's go back to the chronology of events I was trying to describe. I started off by saying that your what you see, what you hear, affects how you feel. How you feel will affect what you do, the actions you take. The actions you take will form your habits. So we got to the habits. The next stage is your attitude. Position yourself through your attitude. You need a positive mental attitude if you want to be successful in 2017. If you've ever held a magnet, you would understand that actually a magnet has two sides. You have the north and the south. You might call that the positive pole and the negative pole. And if you were to place a magnet close to a piece of metal, a small piece of metal, small pieces of metals, if you pointed the right side towards the magnet, it would attract the metals. Because like attracts like. If you were to turn it around and point the opposite side, the, 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 perhaps the negative side, it would repel the items. And that is because you're not attracting like. In the same way, your thoughts and your actions 
and your attitude would either attract things into your life that are consistent with those thoughts, habits and actions or they'll repel them from you. Interestingly, the same way a positive mental attitude would attract positive things to you, a negative mental attitude would attract negative things to you. So position yourself by reviewing 2016 and asking yourself a question. What attitudes towards life do I have that have not served me? What behaviors and attitudes do I need to have for 2017 to achieve my goals? A positive mental attitude will get you into more doors, will help you sail across more challenges than a negative mental attitude. So decide, choose what you would see from now. Decide that you will look at, open the windows and look out the windows and rather than see the specks in the windows that you will see the rainbow. rainbow. Decide when you look at a glass, rather than see it as half empty, you see it as half full. It's all about changing your perspective. As you go into 2017, you need a perspective of someone who has an expectation from life, someone who has um, a perspective that is in sync with success, a perspective that is in sync with greatness. The next position you must take is to position yourself through your appearance. Now this is slightly, perhaps unsuspected, you might say. This is what the famous author says, man looks on the outside, but God looks in the heart. And that is very true. How you come across, how you look, will decide the impression, the opinions people form about you when they meet you. Make no mistake, you could have a great personality, you could be a really nice person, but until people get to know you and get to experience that personality that you have, they will make a judgment based on your appearance. Positioning yourself really is about making sure that your physical appearance, and that has to do with your health, that has to do with your well-being. That has to do with your 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 um, how you how you how you walk and the posture, how you carry yourself. That also has to do with how you groom yourself. As we go into 2017, make a decision that 2017 will be a year where you're always, always beautifully dressed. I like something I heard about Condoleezza Rice, and. I'm paraphrasing right now, but the account of the story said that she was asked a question by a head of state to say, I've never seen you without a beautiful smile, and I've never seen you without well, you being well-groomed, without you dressed really well, without you looking your best, as though you came out from a, you know, from a photo shoot. And she responded that she had trained herself that every time she walked out the door, every time she came in contact with someone, that she would provide the best picture of who she was. I want you to take that example, and as you go into 2017, remember, opportunities will come your way. Those opportunities will come through people. Those opportunities will not be dropped through drones. They're not gonna be dropped on your door. They're not gonna fall on the roof. Opportunities will not come and knock on the door. And if you're waiting for opportunities, you might find that what you have left are the scraps that are left by those who have grabbed all the great opportunities. So as you go into 2017, position yourself in how you look, in how you react, in how you speak, so that you create an impression where people say, I don't know him, I don't know her, but I'd love to get to know them. Every opportunity that comes your way in 2017 will come through people. Make yourself a pleasurable experience when people meet you. 
The final thing is really to position yourself through your words. There is power in your tongue. What you say is taking you to the future you want or is holding you back from reaching that future. One of the famous quotes I like says that your tongue is like a rudder of a ship. If you've ever been on a ship or on a sailing boat, and I mean a big, like a yacht, maybe not really a sailing boat, um, something happens. If you've ever been into and you've seen how the ship is controlled, it's always a very small piece of equipment, like a joystick, it's very small. You can see a really big ship, a big yacht, what controls it is, is a very small device, very small. In the same way, your mouth, the words coming out from your mouth, knowingly or unknowingly, is controlling the direction of your life. You may not be able to change the destination you're trying to get to, but through your words, you can start to change the direction slowly. And if you can change directions, you can arrive at the right destination. And there is no greater time to practice the use of words and choosing more empowering words, more encouraging words, or choosing the kind of words you want to use that aligns with your goals and your daily um, lifestyle. There is no better time to practice those than during the Christmas period. When you have your loved ones around, you can practice on them and have them correct you. So that when you start 2017, you're ready. It means when you walk into a place, you speak hope, you speak love, you speak encouragement. Everything that comes out of your mouth is positive. People like to do business with positive, happy people. If you can use your mouth to direct your life, you've almost successfully achieved most of your goals because your mouth will create opportunities. In the same way, it's not just about speaking. You want to say the right words, but you want to know when to say the right words. I'll say that again. You want to say the right words, but you want to know when to say the right words. So why don't you use the Christmas period to study the art of communication? That's what I'm doing right now. I'm practicing my communication because one of my goals has to do with what I want to do in 10 years. Now I can sit at home and I can talk or I can talk to you right now and later on I can review and I can talk to you unscripted. I can review what I said and I can realize actually there are a few things that I say often that I shouldn't say. And that helps me, it's a feedback process, it helps me go back and start changing so that when I arrive in the future that I'm dreaming about, I'm ready. I'm ready. In the same way, start practicing for 2017. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be, wherever you want to go, start preparing. Let's move quickly to number four. Number three, actually. Number three is you have to perform. Life never gives you what you need. Life will not give you in 2017 what you want. Life will not give you what you have a passion for. Life will give you what you deserve. You must be deserving of your dream and goals to achieve it. You must have a plan, but you must work your plan. It's not just about having a dream you, you have to get out of that dream cocoon. You have to get out of that dream world. Get out the shovel and start digging. You have to perform. You must be willing to work hard. One of the ways you do this is by understanding the value of effort. Hard work is good, but hard work is not the most important part of the equation of success. 
Some of the hardest working people in the world are the poorest. Effort, in my opinion, is simply hard work plus smart work with consistency. The cocktail of those three is what I call effort. You must be willing to put in the longer hours. You must have purpose. You should have a system whereby you can consistently review your performance because what you cannot measure, you cannot manage. To be able to measure it and manage your life well, you need a discipline of constant, never-ending improvement where every single day you're reviewing what you've done and you're making changes. You're making changes. You must adopt the principle of deliberate practice. In 2017, life expects you to perform. If you perform, you will be rewarded. If you don't, you will not be rewarded. Life would only give you what you deserve. You must be willing to burn your boats cut all forms and sources of retreat and march forward. Promise yourself that you will never give up. Promise yourself that you will sacrifice what is necessary, providing it's in harmony with your goals, providing that it doesn't violate the needs of other people and that you act in a way and like someone that you would admire. But you need to prepare for next year, you need to plan for next year, you need to position yourself for next year and you need to perform. You have to perform. You're going to have to put in sweat equity and it will be a lot of sweat equity but I can promise you one thing. The fruits of the tree will taste so much better than the roots. The roots might taste bitter and the work you do to get the roots in the ground may be tiresome, but the fruits will be so sweet. And when you have the fruits in your hand, you will forget the pain and the labor.